Right. There, there's probably a huge energy penalty, and there may always be an energy penalty, but how else are we going to get blueberries up from Chile unless we fly it on an airplane? And it's going to have to be liquid fuels. I, I think in 30 or 40 years, the world's view of, of what is a good, good balance, energy input, energy output, will be able to find some alternative to what we've just used the last barrel of domestic oil. I don't have answers to your question from a thermodynamic standpoint. Here again, the problem that we have, in addition to the expense, and that's why the Defense Department, we think, would be useful in that, because the private sector is not going to step forward in, in solving this problem. The other is just the volumes. What we don't know is whether we could actually handle the massive volumes of carbon dioxide coming from a coal plant. Yeah. I mean, to try to have to make that much fuel from that much carbon dioxide, it's going to have to be a huge facility operating, as you said. I mean, it's going to have to really be... That's why if you put all these together, we want to come up with a solution. And we think we think we came up with a solution. Right now, everybody's playing around with it. Kerry, Lieberman, Graham, I guess Graham's out now, right? The climate change bill that was introduced yesterday, they're tinkering with it. It's politics, trying to get something going. We went with the tech, technological solution, and this will work. It's just whether we have the will to spend the money. And now, since we spend trillions of dollars, we could get this off the ground with a trillion dollars, don't you think, John? And the Defense Department. Cut me in. <laughs> and, and it would set the base load of electricity that we need for America so that we could then maintain our dynamic growth. And it would still leave enough room, in my opinion, for private utility companies to still be able to compete in a marketplace to add additional electricity that we need and where they could make their money back and make their returns. But right now, we're on pins and needles. I know the situation in California and New York and everywhere else and with these utilities. And quiet as it's kept, the next target for bailout, in my opinion, could be the utility sector because they can't really raise their rates because uh, the public will start hollering and screaming and the politicians will not let you do it. Well, they've got to do that now just to get past botched deregulation. They're having to raise their rates almost 100%. You've already seen some of it. And that's just to get back to even board. They're going to have to go up even higher than that. And so to try to do these other things they need to do, we just don't think it's going to happen. Norris, who are your natural allies and who are your national opponents for this report? Well, my environmental colleagues are my natural opponents for this because it's nuclear power, it's coal, steel, it's um, uh, a, a huge facility that you could make a case is going to be a polluting facility. You got hydrogen being used on, even though they, they say they want it for fuel cell production. Mm -hmm. Natural ally, ally, I think, would be the Defense Department. I mean, they like building these big structures. I'm hoping it will be. Right now, we haven't gotten that much feedback, but they'll probably wait for the political situation. But I think if it gets bad enough, well, they like building war machines, I guess, better than, than engineering projects such as this one. But I think it might be a challenge with them to pull this off in combination with the nuclear utilities. I think that would be a challenge for the military engineers and the utility, the nuclear utility engineers and the coal guys. You're, you're getting coal guys with nuclear people with military people. But it, it is true that the, the, the Department of Defense spends a lot of time trying to come up with the single fuel that will satisfy their aviation needs and their mobile fleet needs. And they constantly put out RFPs, you know, can you come up with a better way to convert coal to liquid? And it's just not going to fly, and the Department of Defense is backing away. Let me say, John, there are also two programs that are currently going that we want to talk to the Department of Energy about. One is um, Nuclear 2010 where they want it to, they want to prove next generation nuclear technology in Idaho. The other is future gen. Future gen is where they want to demonstrate a, a carbon sequestration project. So if you can combine those two programs, that's why we're looking at legislation. Um, they backed off of Yucca Mountain and now there's a commission that's looking at it. So I'll be testifying before these and we'll be pushing this energy defense reservation idea. And another one that we're talking about is also taking nuclear waste function out of the Department of Energy and forming a nuclear waste management agency. Because still, you're still using nuclear power at even our situation, and you're still going to have to deal with the waste. In my, in my situation, you just reprocess it, reuse it. Well, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, just one more question. Um, sure. Yeah, I understand the importance of uh, reducing carbon dioxide emissions uh, in the atmosphere, uh, continuing environmental conservation, sustaining a healthy lifestyle. What work, what work has been done or is being done to reduce methane levels um, in the atmosphere, um, which 
even though they're in smaller concentrations as far as parts per million, um, they're more or toxic or damaging to the environment than carbon dioxide. Good, good question. Methane concentration in the atmosphere is actually increasing, and it had been decreasing for a long while. And it may well be that there are more old wells leaking methane, but there's also a concern that because the permafrost and the tundra are also showing signs of deteriorating and melting, it's not certain, but methane is escaping from the Arctic rim, right? I mean, they, they've put huge plastic sheets over small lakes that were never there, lakes that just formed in Siberia, and they've captured enough natural gas that they can flare it. I'm not saying that that's the reason that there's an increase in methane in the atmosphere, but it's a noticeable increase and it's a big concern because if it is from a positive feedback melting the permafrost, I don't know what we're going to do then. Plus the administration has a program called um, Asia Pacific Partnership and Methane to Markets and that's where they're trying to um, address the problem that you're talking about. It's been reasonably, reasonably successful. It includes India, the Chinese, and that's what we need to bring to the table. On this energy defense reservation, if the United States doesn't have the guts to do it, China would be a perfect laboratory for them to do it. They could set up 10 reservations, and this is the sort of thing they will do. They are already developing the pebble bed modular reactor. So this is the sort of thing they might want to do. Well, as late as it is, and I really thank you for your your attention here. I have seven copies of my paper. If, uh, if that's not enough, I'd be happy to send a copy to you via email. Uh, so thank you so much for sitting through this. Does anybody have any else have any questions? Make a great term paper, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend.